Oh, let me make myself bigger. There we go. Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here, and this video is for lesson 2-4 in Essentials of Calculus. I'll be talking about the limit definition of the derivative. So here we go. We're going to get into some calculus here. I'll break this up into three parts. Um, the first video, we'll just I just want to introduce what the limit definition of the derivative is. The second one, I'll do some examples. And the third one, I'll use an alternate definition that we often see. All right, so let's take a look here. So the first thing I want to do is just talk about what the definition of a derivative is. Now, oftentimes in calculus, we're looking for the slope of a curve. And the slope of a curve is defined to be the same as the slope of that curve's tangent line. Now remember, the tangent line is the line that crosses the, the, um, the curve at just one point. So if I just had this one point here, and let me use a different color so that we can see what I'm talking about. If I'm looking at just this point right here, let's use X, right? Then the tangent line would be this red tangent line right here that we see. That's the tangent line because it just hits it once. What we're going to do is we're going to take the slope of what's called the secant line. The secant line is between any two points. And what we're going to do is we're going to make points closer and closer. Ah, oh, come on, man. And closer. And we're just going to keep making secant lines closer and closer and closer. And so notice that this, this distance between my x values of my points is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? That, that difference that difference is getting closer to zero. And whenever we're making something get closer and closer and closer and closer to something, that's called a limit, right? So what we're doing is we're taking the slope of this secant line. So the slope of the secant line is over here. Um, the slope of the secant line is gonna be the change of y over the change of x. So we're taking the change of y, which is gonna be um, this is x here, and this is x plus delta x. Delta x is the little space in between, right? We're going to take um, rise over run here. So f, f of x delta x, which is our y value for this spot there, and h, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said h, and f of x, which is my y value there, I'm going to take the difference of those, which is going to be my difference of y and my change in x is just going to be delta x which is the space in between these two guys and that's my secant line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this delta x and I'm going to shrink that and it's going to get smaller right delta x is here then smaller delta x is right here so I'm taking a limit as delta x approaches zero this limit is my slope of my tangent line the slope of the tangent line is the derivative Get that in your head right now. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Slope of the tangent line is the derivative at that x value, at that point. All right, so at a function's given x value, the slope of the tangent line is called the derivative. Now, we have some common symbols that we use for derivative. Um, it depends on what team you're on. Are you your team Leibniz or you are team Newton? Well, it you know, they're both these guys, Leibniz and Newton, both kind of create a calculus at about the same time, independently of one another. So we've got, we use both their uh, their notations. So we've got, the most commonly used notation is, is this notation here, F with a little apostrophe kind of up here. That's called prime. So we say that is F prime of X, F prime of X. Okay. Um, some other notations that we might find. So we see f prime of x, we see y prime, we see dy dx. It's called a differential. d dx of some sort of thing. That's also a differential. That's the derivative of f of x. We might see m tan. That's the derivative or the slope, slope of the tangent line. We're going to see this limit. So we want to see that limit. We might just see that limit and go, oh, hey, that's the limit um, that says the derivative. I can figure out what it is. Or we might actually, instead of a delta x, we might see as an h. I know there's some textbooks that you like to use that delta x as an h. But I think delta x makes more sense than what we're doing in terms of, the, of um, looking for the slope of the tangent line and making that, that difference smaller and smaller and smaller. And so what happens if you have a vertical tangent line? I can go straight up. Well, there's no slope in a vertical line, right? So if there's no slope there, then it's not you can't take a derivative 
So if we got a vertical tangent line, we can't take a derivative. Um, a couple other places we can't take a derivative is if, now if you can see my hand, let me, let me make myself bigger here. Um, so vertical tangent line, there's no derivative. Um, if two things come to a sharp corner, like bam, they come to, bam, they come to a corner. Then there, there's no derivative in a sharp corner. You're like, sharp corner, there's no derivative there. Um, so anytime you have a vertical tangent line or a sharp corner, like boom, like that, or they come in like this, like that, and sharp into a corner, there's no, uh, no derivative there either. So every time, anytime there is a derivative at a point, we call it differentiable. So differentiation or differentiable is when we can take, so differentiation is a process of finding the derivative and a differentiable means that we can find the derivative at a point. So that's my quick introduction of what a derivative is. In my next video, you should have at least in this video understood, hopefully, the idea of a slope of the tangent line and that a derivative is, is in fact a limit. So in my next video, I will show you how to do some examples using the limit definition. We'll catch you soon. Bye.